No, I mean, I as I, I said, I don't have any problem with a empowered woman kind of thing, a strong female character. In fact, I actually think if done right, they are very like, I love those kind of stories where like if they're done right. The problem with this movie is Carol Danvers, we're not given a whole lot of reason to empathize with her. As we said very early on in this sure. podcast, she doesn't really have a weakness. There's not really like right. a reason to believe she would fail. Like it's kind of like she's this all powerful, like super person where it's like she's invincible. She doesn't really get hurt, kind of. It's like, I mean, it's like she's not very relatable, not really a lot of reason to follow her like as a character per se she's and she also is kind of callous and arrogant a little bit so it's like they're just like these things where it's like if she was developed more as a character given more reason for us giving us more reason to empathize with her i would have loved the movie a whole lot more probably even given it more points in some categories but we aren't given those so and it would be interesting to look at her as a character compared to say another strong competent female lead such as like Katniss Everdeen or someone like Mm -hmm. that and see how they stack up in this kind of thing because I do I haven't reviewed Katniss uh Everdeen's movie The Hunger Games but Katniss Everdeen's uh the character Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Mm -hmm. Games anyways uh I haven't reviewed that but my impression having watched the movie is that she would be given points for being a strong female lead who also yeah. is compelling mm-hmm. in her own way. So maybe that's a good good place to look if you as an audience mm-hmm. are curious what this would look like in comparison. And that has nothing to do with whether or not it's a like a feminist message or not. It has more to do mm-hmm. with how this character was developed uh, compellingly. And frankly, she's too strong to be compelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- another just- example. I actually have another example. Um, and this movie probably stands out in my mind because of this. Um, the movie itself could have used... uh, No, uh, there is a... Recently, I don't know how many years ago, um, there was a Tomb Raider adaption movie. Laura Um, Croft! Yeah, Laura Croft. But, and the movie, the story could have used a lot of work. It wasn't a great movie story-wise, but the character development into Laura Croft was phenomenal. And she was like, like, she was a good example of a strong female character who was weak, who struggled, who had weakness, like, she had flaws... But it was like, and at the end of the movie, she, she changed over the course of the movie, became more resourceful, became more independent, became like the stronger person. And her story was heavily compelling. Like she right. grows as a result of the story and conflict. And it wasn't like, and it was, act- and I liked that part of the movie so much. Like it stuck with me. It was like, this is actually a good example of how a strong female character should be written because this is like, it was phenomenal to me, like how much I related to her. You're absolutely right. And to be clear to all of our audience, it's not that we're saying that uh, females need to be weak and then become strong throughout the story. I think that (laughs) that goes across any gender. You have the males too. For example, Lord of the Rings, Frodo Baggins is partially a great character because he is so weak and needs the help of all these people around Mm -hmm. him. And as he develops as a character... He grows competency, but also grows in his his risks as well. So it's all about having those characters start from a place of uh, incompetency, risk, and growing into the role that's demanded of them. And that's mm-hmm. just a great thing to do to any character.